When a fly lands on a Venus flytrap, it only takes one tenth of a second for the trap to snap shut. And even though this makes it a deadly predator, there are other carnivorous plants that can catch hundreds or even thousands. So what happens if we take the five deadliest carnivorous plants and give each of them exactly one hour outside to catch as many flies as they can? Well, let's find out in the one hour hustle. The first event of the Flytrap Games, where we're searching for the deadliest carnivorous plant. And Patrick here, the Dewey Pine, might actually have the best tactic. He doesn't even need to move. Flies just need to touch him. And once they do, they get wrapped up in glue that slowly suffocates them. Now obviously, each of these plants are very different and catch different types of bugs. So to make this as fair as possible, the plants just need to catch as much as possible. They don't need to hold on to it. The strength event will come up in a few more weeks. However, Patrick the Dewey Pine has some of the slimiest dew out of all carnivorous plants. As this fly tries to get free, he rubs his legs together which only spread that slime all over his body. And sometimes it's even enough to get their wings stuck together which means that they'll never be able to fly away. Now Patrick has actually surprised me with his three catches because I didn't think he caught anything until I started editing as there were no flies stuck on him. Which is why today's catch and release rule is so important, especially when we see what the hungriest carnivorous plant can do. But before we see that, we have the world's biggest sundew, the king sundew. His leaves can get up to 28 inches long and often feeds on huge bugs like moths, butterflies, and even dragonflies. And although he also uses sticky droplets like Patrick to catch food, the king has a trick up his sleeve. He can move his leaves to strangle his prey. And because of this, he might be able to catch more food than Patrick ever could. Look at that. And that might just be true. After only 40 seconds into his one hour time limit, the king has already caught his first fly. However, this guy figures out how to escape thanks to his friend. You see, this guy also gets caught but uses his wings to pull himself free. And after he sees this, he ends up copying him and also manages to escape. But just as soon as that one gets free, the king catches another fly that's basically double the size of those other two. And he doesn't stop there. Over and over again. If these flies were the king's main food source, like moths and butterflies, we wouldn't be able to see his leaves after all 10 of these catches. But just wait until we see the plants whose main food is flies. Until then, we have the most deadly looking carnivorous plant. Darling, the Cobra Lily. Darling's tongue, dripping with sweet but deadly nectar, sticks out of her trap just like a spitting cobra. But instead of going after her food, the food comes to her. And after they get a taste of that nectar, they walk up into her mouth and eventually fall down her throat, where her victims then get digested by her acids. However, Darling was kind of slacking a bit because it took her half an hour to attract her first fly. And to just make sure we're all on the same page here, because of how sticky plants work, when a bug lands on them, they get caught immediately, even if it manages to escape later. But a bug can only get caught by the next few plants in today's event by actually getting caught inside their traps. So what this means for Darling is that she didn't even catch one bug today even though she managed to attract 7 of them in total. It's okay though because the next few weeks will give her tons of chances to move up on the leaderboard. But it's time we look at the two favorites for today's event. 
our Venus flytrap and our pitcher plants. They are both perfectly adapted to catching flies. So if we are going to see a feast today, it's going to be now. Venus flytraps catch one bug per trap. So if B52 here fills up with flies, we will swap them out with another flytrap. In fact, all the plants in the series can swap out with another plant as long as they are the same. Fly traps with fly traps, king sun juice with king sun juice, you understand what I mean. This is to make sure we always have competitors ready to go. Imagine if B52 catches a fly in every trap today, he wouldn't have finished digesting his meal for next week's event. And as you can tell, this is very necessary because the flies are basically swarming the fly trap before I can even get the camera set up. And it was just a matter of seconds before B-52 starts taking his chances. But just like in season 1, it's obvious that B-52 needs more than just size to do well. He is letting the fly traps down by missing basically everything that comes his way and has only caught one fly after four misses. However, this catch might be his turning point. As you can see, I'm still getting everything set up while all of this is going on, which is when I noticed these two using the trap the way it is meant to be used by licking it. Fly traps secrete tasty nectar around the edges of the trap, which is one tactic they use to attract food. And for B-52, this is the only tactic that seems to be working for him because he isn't that quick and his size doesn't help him that much. Now, as bugs lick that nectar, they slowly move around the trap, which is actually what we want because that's how bugs get tricked into hitting the trigger hairs. However, because B-52 is so big, not all bugs are long enough to actually reach those trigger hairs. But if your nectar is tasty enough that you have more than one bug eating it at once, well, you might just be able to catch something. After only getting his second catch, B-52 seems to have just forgotten about his let them get addicted to nectar before closing strategy. And with all of his traps now closed, it's time to bring out our replacement. Black Pearl, and she starts taking names before I even finish setting up the camera. Within just 10 minutes, Black Pearl has pulled the fly traps up from two catches to six which means they should be in second place when we update the leaderboard in a couple of minutes. But until we do that, it's time to see what the hungriest carnivorous plant in the world can do, the pitcher plant. Now, I'm not calling them the hungriest carnivorous plants for no reason. Pitcher plants are laced in an addictive and toxic nectar that gets almost any insect instantly hooked before poisoning them with something called conine. And they're long, bright and colorful pitchers are able to hold thousands of insects at a time, especially when they're too drunk to move properly. So let's find out what our pitcher plants, the most nectar covered carnivorous plants of them all, can do to the flies in our garden. Yet, funnily enough, Sarah here has so much nectar all over her pitchers that the flies don't even need to go into her traps to get some more. Luckily for us though, we have a smaller pitcher plant that actually has less nectar that will be a perfect substitute for the remainder of their time. And this early substitution came in clutch for the pitcher plants.
with only 12 minutes left, Karubi here needs just two more catches to tie the pitcher plants with the King Sunjus at the top of the leaderboard. And with the way he is going right now, he could easily do it. And somehow, Ruby here managed to tie his team up with the King Sunjus by filling up his trap as much as he possibly could. He definitely would have eaten more if he wasn't so full, but where do all the other competitors stand on the leaderboard? And what do the plants actually win at the end of this competition? I honestly was not expecting such impressive numbers for our first event, especially from the King Sanjus. But if they win, or if any of them win, they will be getting some very interesting prizes. In Season 1, the winner got a drop of my blood, which they didn't seem to like too much. So this time, the winner will get a custom made winner's pot so that they can grow as big as genetically possible. They'll also get a tub full of crickets that they will eat in the winner's event and their name will be engraved into a trophy that we could use across all of the flat trap games in the future. That is if we keep on doing this series. So if you want to see this series continue in the future, please subscribe and share this video with your friends that would probably enjoy watching this as I really want to get this channel to 100,000 subscribers this year. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.